New York City, December 1995. Two old friends, Adam Schlesinger and Chris Collingwood, reunite to start a new band. They made a good freaking team and were quite the songwriting duo. They first met 10 years prior as freshmen at Williams College in Massachusetts, and soon after that found themselves starting several bands together. Bands with names like Wooly Mammoth, Are You My Mother? And three men, when stood side by side, have a wingspan of over 20 12 feet. One of their bands, called The Wallflowers, ended up getting a record deal with a small independent label after they both got out of college and had moved to Boston. However, they never recorded under that name and eventually sold the rights of the name to Jacob Dylan's band, The Wallflowers. In the early 1990s, Flesh Singer had seen modest success writing music for TV shows like The Dana Carvey Show and playing with a band called Ivy, but he never had stopped making songs with Collingwood, usually under the name Pen Wheel. So yeah, returning to New York City in December of 1995, the two decided to record a demo of songs they had recently been working on. And that's when Fountains of Wayne was born. They named the band after a lawn ornament store in Wayne, New Jersey, which was near where Schlesinger grew up. They sent the demo to Atlantic Records, and wouldn't you know it, Atlantic loved it and quickly signed them. Schlesinger and Collingwood wanted to record the album as quickly as possible because they both had a habit of overthinking recordings in the past. The two recorded nearly all of the instrumentation for the debut self-titled album in one week in April 1996. Schlesinger also produced the album, and even though he wrote more of the songs, he and Collingwood decided to split the rights for the songs evenly to keep it simple. Throughout their years collaborating, they generally wrote their songs separately. Soon after this, Schlesinger wrote a Mercy Beat style song called That Thing You Do for a new film Tom Hanks was working on. To Schlesinger's surprise, that song ended up being the main song featured in the film and a big hit. Heck, the film was even called That Thing You Do. The success of the soundtrack to the film helped fuel some hype for the release of Fountains of Wayne's debut album, which Atlantic released on October 1st, 1996. Critics generally praised the album, and it had some success on alternative radio and MTV. That said, 1996 was the post-grunge era, and the Fountains of Wayne record was pure power pop, more in the same vein of bands like Big Star and The Kinks, and boy was it catchy, with some of the most original and memorable melodies ever created. That said, the guitars were turned up loud enough to fit in, and the self-titled album had modest hits with the song. Radiation Vibe, Sink to the Bottom, and Survival Car. Meanwhile, Schlesinger and Collingwood had been playing live shows to promote the album and recruited Jody Porter, who Schlesinger had previously collaborated with, to join the band on lead guitar. Brian Young, who had recently stopped playing drums with the band The Posies, actually approached them and became the new Fountains of Wayne drummer after auditioning. In 1997, the band toured with bands like Sloan, The Smashing Pumpkins, and The Lemonheads. On October 6th, Atlantic Records released the second album from Schlesinger's band, Ivy, and while it didn't get much commercial success, it got a lot of love from critics. In 1998, Collingwood and Schlesinger wrote some new songs with the intention of telling a more thematic story for an album. What resulted was the songs that would make up the second Fountains of Wayne studio album, Utopia Parkway, named after the title track in an actual Road in Queens. It was a concept record that examined modern suburbia. While Schlesinger's songs generally stayed more lighthearted, Collingwood's songs got a bit more serious, but it was still ridiculously catchy. Utopia Parkway was also the first Fountains of Wayne album to feature Porter and Young in the recordings. Atlantic Records released it on April 6, 1999, but didn't do much to promote it, and therefore it had even less commercial success success than their first album. However, once again, critics generally praised it, and it specifically found more success on college radio. Utopia Parkway had three singles, Denise, Red Dragon Tattoo, and Trouble Times. But again, the songs didn't get much mainstream airplay. Fountains of Wayne toured throughout the rest of 1999. In 2000, Atlantic dropped the band from their label, and this really upset Collingwood in particular. The band decided to take a break after this. Over 
the next few years, Schlesinger stayed busy writing songs for various films, TV shows, and even other bands and artists. He also released a third album with Ivy and produced albums for The Verve Pipe, They Might Be Giants, and David Mead. Meanwhile, Collingwood created a pop country band called Gay Potatoes and played some solo shows. Porter made music with his band The Astrojet, and Young made some recordings with various artists, including Schlesinger's band Ivy. By the summer of 2001, the band was back in touch and making new music. Instead of letting a record label take the lead, they decided to record their third studio album themselves, with Schlesinger funding most of it. To test the new material, Fountains of Wayne went on tour in November 2002. After the album was completely finished, S-Curve Records was like, that's good stuff. And can we release it? The band said, of course. S-Curve released Welcome Interstate Managers on June 10th, 2003. It was the most successful Fountains of Wayne album by far. It was one of those rare albums that critics and music snobs adored, but also found huge mainstream success. At first, Welcome Interstate Managers just got a lot of college radio airplay, but soon their single Stacy's Mom took off. The song stayed on the Billboard Hot 100 chart for 17 weeks and was one of the first songs to reach the number one spot for iTunes most downloaded songs list. It also was nominated for a Grammy. The music video, which featured model Rachel Hunter, was also a big hit. This was all strange for the band, and today they are still considered by some to be a one-hit wonder band due to this being their only major hit. In 2003 and 2000. And four, Fountains of Wayne once again toured all over the place, playing some of their biggest shows ever. In 2005, the band released Out of State Plates, a collection of B-sides, rarities, and two new songs. Of note, a brilliant cover of Britney Spears' hit Baby One More Time. That same year, they went on another short tour and played a set for the PBS show Soundstage. In 2006, while the band was touring Tokyo, Collingwood had a mental breakdown and they had a cancel a few shows while he got treatment. Over the next couple years, Collingwood also struggled with depression and alcoholism, which is why he ended up having less of a role on the band's fourth studio album, Traffic and Weather, which Virgin Records released on April 3rd, 2007. The album achieved quite a bit less commercial success than Welcome Interstate Managers, but critics still generally praised the album. Rolling Stone magazine included the song I-95 on its year-end best of list. And one thing was sure by this point, Fountains of Wayne loved to sing songs about traveling in real places. By golly. Also in 2007, Schlesinger co-wrote songs for a musical adaptation of the John Waters film Cry Baby. In 2008, Porter released his debut solo album, Close to the Sun. That same year, Schlesinger joined a supergroup band called Tinted Windows, which also featured James Eha from the Smashing Pumpkins, Taylor Hansen of Hansen, and Bun E. Carlos of Cheap Trick. S-Curve released their self-titled debut album on April 21st, 2009. Also in 2009, Fountains of Wayne released a live concert DVD called No Better Place, live in Chicago, and played some acoustic shows of brand new songs. By that time, Collingwood had cleaned up his act and had a more active role as the band recorded their fifth and what would be their final studio album, Sky Full of Holes, which the independent record label label Yep Rock, released on July 20th, 2011, first in Japan and then later in Europe and North America. Just like all their other albums, critics generally praised this album as well. But it wasn't really the type of stuff played on the radio anymore. Sky Full of Holes also found the band turning down the volume and becoming more chill. Perhaps those acoustic sets influenced this. Sadly, during the recording of it, Collingwood and Schlesinger did not get along well, and this is ultimately what led to the end of the band. Still, Fountains of Wayne played several shows in 2012 and 2013 promoting the album. They played their last show at First Avenue in Minneapolis, Minnesota on October 19th. 
2013. In the following years, despite many rumors of a reunion, the band never got together again. That didn't mean they didn't stay busy. Brian Young continued to drum for several bands and currently is the drummer for the Jesus and Mary chain. Jody Porter has played not only guitar, but bass, keyboards, and drums and sung vocals on many albums, including with folks like Juliana Hatfield and Albert Hammond Jr. Chris Collingwood started a new band called Look Park, named after his favorite park in his hometown of Northampton, Massachusetts. Yep Rock released their self-titled debut album in 2016. Adam Schlesinger probably stayed busier than them all, continuing to produce records and continuing to write songs for countless artists and bands. He received several Emmy nominations and two Emmy Awards. He performed at multiple Tony Awards ceremonies. He continued to make songs for films and TV shows. Of note, he was the executive music producer of the show Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Tragically, on April 1st, 2020, Schlesinger died of complications related to COVID-19. He was 52. Today, Fountains of Wayne are mostly just known for Stacy's mom. This is sad to me because, frankly, their entire catalog is brilliant. The songwriting combination of Schlesinger and Collingwood in particular was pretty darn special. Fountains of Wayne may be known to some as a one-hit wonder, but all of their songs could have easily been hits. And hopefully, more and more folks will realize this in the future. I know this pandemic is horrible, but I am still in shock that it took one of my songwriting heroes, Adam Schlesinger. Please stay safe out there. Fountains of Wayne was one of those bands I listened to over and over and told as many of my friends about because for some reason, they just didn't understand how genius they were like I did. I've always been a sucker for power pop and Hey Julie might just be the most perfect song ever written. So what's your favorite Fountains of Wayne song or album? Which band should I do a brief history of next? Let me know in the comments below and thanks for watching this dorky video I made.